in the, in the middle at, at, towards the back. The woman in the middle towards the back, if you can get a microphone that far. So we talked about short, um, the pain in the short term, but are we doing anything to mitigate that pain? So, so things like focusing on cyber security, investing more in things like that, um, rather than just focusing on, on the armed forces, we, all, we should also protect ourselves and in, in, you know, look after security within our country as well. You're nodding your head there. Yeah, and... and uh... I'm, I'm, I've come from an armed forces background. I've been reserve forces officer for most of my adult life. So I am biased, but it's not just about the number of soldiers. And actually, um, uh, as, well as, the, as well as being the Minister for Europe and North America, I'm also the Minister for Space. And actually, satellites. What, the whole of space. The whole of space. Wow. The whole of space. Have you got all the jobs? Yeah. The government's I'm still, I'm still yet to meet the ambassador. I'm still yet to meet the ambassador. Uh, okay. The, so what about but, cyberspace? But fact, so taking cyber, greater, yes. greater set of protection. So, uh, so we've recent, so we recently updated our uh, cybersecurity strategy. Uh, uh, things like satellite protection. Russia, uh, quite recent, didn't make the headlines, but Russia fairly recently blew up a satellite causing really dangerous debris in, uh, in, the, in, in orbit around the Earth. These are all areas where we have to defend ourselves and we have to spend money defending ourselves. So yes, our armed forces are important, and as I say, I'm, I'm biased in that respect, but the points you made are just perhaps even more important to make sure we get right because we are, we are under attack in all those realms on almost a daily basis. A basis, and I have to say, and I, I, before we lose uh, time in the program, I have to say that David and I have had plenty of rows in in our career, but uh, uh, today what we saw is the front bench, the Labour front bench, the SNP being critical, but absolutely being supportive in what we're ultimately trying to achieve, and I think that's been reflected this evening. I think it shows us at our best. You weren't looking that supportive just now about no, protecting I've against cyber attacks. Be a bit critical because, look. The authoritative piece of work on the resilience that our country needs was done in a cross-party way by our intelligence committee of MPs uh, across the House of Commons and the House of Lords. And they produced the Russell Report. And we are still waiting to see that report properly implemented. And what, what, it has taken until this crisis... Just give us some idea, what, for, what, as a need, headline, what we, we would expect to see. We need to know who owns those houses where the lights are off in Kensington. 250 houses owned overseas, we've got no ideas. We need to crack down on those shell companies. We've got drug running in London with money going round. We've got... We've got We've, we're the cocaine capital of Britain in, in London, with kids being trafficked all... You know, what are we doing about it? Not nearly enough. But surely so, we had so, Russian money going around London when Labour was in power as well? Look, the Russia report was... was <laughs> up, 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 look, this, I don't want to be that partisan. Of course this story began when we were in power. I accept that. But it's got considerably worse. We have a report, it's not been implemented, and it's right that my party also says to, to Chris, why is it, why is it that we've had a change to our election bill that means that political parties can receive donations from nationals over uncapped? Why did we do that? And why won't you give that two million back that, the, that, that Russia, like Putin linked people gave to your Whoa. party? Give it back. And if you're not going to give it back, I mean, they're British citizens to, now. Give it, they're British citizens, Give David. the money to the Ukraine Resistance Fund. What? Do it and stand above it all. For once. Do it. So, you, you, were so chairman David, of the party. David. you were chairman of the party when some of this money came into your coffers. And David, you know David the donations are made by British nationals. If you're saying... Dual nationals, if, many of them. Uh, so, we're now... Whoa, 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 whoa. So we're now writing off dual nationals. Is that what you're saying? One of them. So, uh, one uh, Dave, of well, David, you've had plenty of time. You've former had, finance you've minister had, of Putin's regime. You've had plenty of time. You've had plenty of time to shout at me. So a how, former finance minister. In do you want to just keep regime? talking? Do you want to do a bit of listening? <laughs> how, how long do we have oh, to listen? Okay, how okay. long okay. do we have to right. listen? Right. Well, let's let's hear the answer, and then we'll hear some more from the audience. So, those the donations that we received from British nationals, legitimate donors, 
registered with the Electoral Commission. And I think you should be very, very careful of just implying that all Russians are dirty, I'm all not Russian money. That. Well, you hang on I'm a second. Hang on a second. So why pick on one particular donation? Why, one, why pick on one particular donation? No. So uh, my family, my family, my family has come from a country, Sierra Leone, <sighs> which has had corruption. And I, I would be deeply, deeply offended if you were to imply that all Sierra Leoneans were, were dirty because some yes. Sierra Leoneans are. Yes. And so to suggest... No, David, you've done a lot of talking. <laughs> so to suggest that all donations from Russians are somehow dirty because some Russians are corrupt no. is deeply, deeply racist. No. No. And if you oh. were to do it against any other racial group, sorry. you would be pilloried. I'm okay. sorry, hang, Tim, on, hang, on, sorry, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Timothy, you're sitting there with a wry smile on your face listening to this. <laughs> well, would you like to share your thoughts? I, I was just thinking it's a great example of Western unity, we're sure. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I do remember Peter Mandelson swanning on a yacht with, I think his name was Oleg Deripaska, um, a notable Russian oligarch, so it is both parties. But I think the larger point is that we in Britain as a whole have been just far too welcoming to dirty money, by the way, not just from Russia from all over the world, from China, from the Middle East, from everywhere. And it's become a real running sore of our country. And I think we together have to do something about it. Um, thank you.